Well, staying with the party, the Economic Freedom Fighters wants a Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosivuya Mapisa Ngakula, replaced. The party has formally tabled a motion of no confidence against Mapisa Ngakula. This follows Mapisa Ngakula's decision to call the police into the Cape Town City Hall chamber during President Sir Ramaphosa's State of the Nation address. Well, for more on this, we are now joined via Zoom by political analyst Ribone Tao to weigh in on this motion. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, Ribone. Well, the EFF's motion of no confidence against the Speaker will be heard in a couple of days' time in March, but will have to be supported by members of other big parties, including the ANC, to succeed, uh, you know, with the Freedom Fighters' uh, 44 seats in the Assembly. How do you see this playing out? Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon to the viewers at home. I think we must first um, go back to 2014, you know, um, the, the, the opposition parties at the time also tried a, a vote of no confidence on the then Speaker of Parliament, Pale Gambetta, but the ANC, um, obviously having um, the majority in Parliament, were able to block that. So I see that also happening this time around. I don't see them succeeding with the motion of no confidence on the Speaker. You know, given what we saw during the State of the Nation address, you know, does the Speaker's action, you know, to call security forces into the chambers deserve a motion of no confidence against her? Or is there something else at play here? Uh, in my view, I mean, what transpired at the State of the Nation address was very unfortunate, you know, for the EFF to actually even climb on the stage, you know, and that is a serious security risk on the president, you know. So um, I think the EFF is playing politics. I mean, they've been trying, they've been at it since the era of of, 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 of the former president Jacob Zuma, you know, disrupting uh, Sona, and people are really actually getting tired of them, you know, doing uh, what they need. They need to come up with new strategies, how, how to, to, to move forward. As as an opposition party, how to Ghana support? Because you must remember what was very interesting that they disrupted Sona. They came back. They had the debate when the president was responding. You know, um, to the debate, they did not even uh, show up in parliament. And one asked themselves a question: What kind of an opposition party is this that does not want to engage, but they want to be listened at? But some believe, you know, that um, they also, they too have the right to, you know, to call for, for this motion. Uh, but one of the interesting things is that, you know, soon after that incident that we saw, the EFF then demanded uh, the speaker to apologize, gave uh, her, in fact, 48 hours. But, but that didn't happen. I mean, should we be going this route once again, like you've mentioned and you've cited, you know, a previous um, a motion of no confidence against a speaker. Should we really be going back to this point again, especially as you say, we know where this is going to end up? I mean, the reality of the matter is that yes, they asked her to, 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 to apologize. But the question that if she starts now, the EFF will forever provoke her and she'll be always made to apologize, you know. EFF is, pay, is playing politics. Unfortunately, she fell in the trap because this was a trap you know, uh, for her and she fell. But also again, had she not reacted at the time and something happened to the president, again, she would have been seen as reckless as the Speaker of, of, of Parliament. So EFF is just politicking, you know, and they are just making sure that um, they are gaining support uh, for 2024 and playing politics, you know, to expose the ANC. But unfortunately, EFF is exposing itself that it has become irrelevant when it comes to matters of, of Parliament. And of course, the, the EFF is seeking a secret ballot. I mean, uh, is this even a guarantee at this point? It won't, it won't, it won't, it, it won't succeed, that secret ballot. I mean, it happened again in 2014. They tried to pursue, uh, to push for a secret ballot, you know, and I come with arguments that uh, when you elect a speaker as a secret ballot and so forth, so it needs to happen in that regard. But obviously at the time, you know, um, um, arguments were made which were more legal. I'm not a legal expert. I think a legal person can then explain further, you know, on, on those arguments that were made in 2014. But I don't see um, the, 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 the ANC allowing for that secret ballot. We know now even with Pala Pala, you know, they tried to push for the secret ballot, but it was also dismissed by the Speaker. 
And when we start talking about, you know, the conduct of the EFF, particularly during the State of the Nation address, how much of that can we read in terms of the politics within the party itself, in terms of where it sees itself um, as a leading party, you know, that is there to serve the people of this country? I mean, does it weigh heavily on their conduct, you know, in terms of their credibility as a political party, in terms of how they address pertinent issues uh, in Parliament? I think they don't have a strategy, and that's why they've kept this for so long, you know, I mean, as I said earlier on, this started under Jacob Zuma on the Nkandla matter, and now we're seeing it continuing, you know, and when you speak to ordinary South Africans, I mean, they are fed up, you know, um, by the behavior of the EFF. So the EFF needs to come up with a new strategy in Parliament. Um, this strategy is no longer working for them to actually want to hold the, uh, the president accountable, because even at the time during Nkandla, they wanted to hold the then president accountable. Accountable. They need to come up with other avenues how to hold the president accountable in, instead of what they, they continue to do every year, flying to Cape Town and then not sitting for the sauna and then going back. You know, those are this, that's actually taxpayers' money that's been wasted uh, through them getting on those flights to Cape Town. Rabonia Dao, thank you so much for weighing in on this matter. I really do appreciate it. Rabonia Dao is a political analyst there for us. All right.